morning, everyone. This is David with According to Adventures here in Pioneer RV Park. We go off Springs Road. And I'm kind of near the entrance. Just giving you an idea of what this is like. It's almost unbelievable. I'm underneath one of these large cypress trees. The moss hanging off of them. Somebody looks like checking into the park right there. This gives you kind of a 360 view. That's where the office is right there, that building on your left there. And um, a little overcast today. I should have did this yesterday. It would have been a lot prettier day. But um, it's uh, probably about 70 degrees almost. It's getting nicer. I'm on my way to the dollar store walking around, so I thought I'd take some video of the entrance of the park and I don't know what that building is there obviously a little more modern but you can just see how big these cypress trees are I hope you can get that perspective Wow <laughs> can't find that in my driveway my old stick and brick home and over that way where I'm walking is that cabin um, call it a cracker cabin so and over there further to your left over there is where I'll be walking that's where there's an old train and you go in an old blacksmith shop and I guess it's like a museum of sorts I don't know but um, I'll be walking over this way that's an old cracker cabin from the late 1800s. And um, in the back of it, they might have tours. I see like a ramp made for handicapped people to get up and look, you know, look at it. But um, it's got, actually got an address. WHR. I do heart home, 1879 to 1921. And as you can see, pretty interesting. People used to live like this, and this, you know, these front, this porch is nice. Really, I, I could, I could live in a space that big, couldn't I? And it tells you about who lived here and the lady. And they had, there's four kids, four girls, I think, or five. 1879 cabin. I don't think they had locks on it like that in the day, but they sure do now. But anyways, there's a blacksmith shop over there. Oh, well, this is the Pioneer RV Park. And it's not full hookup. You've got to drive your coach to a dump station. So when I do that, there's a CA Bryant Blacksmith General Repair place. And it's pretty interesting, you know. Kind of neat nostalgia, you know, stuff for in the middle of nowhere in Florida. Visit the Wild Refuge from 10 to 4. An elevated boardwalk to view the animals in their natural habitat. Oh, I'm going to do that. That looks like there'll be something I'll have to do tomorrow. And then I've got all this stuff here. This tells about the... Tells about the... Uh, Mr. Clarence Alvin Bryant, born April 17, 1876. In Millerstown, Kentucky, owned and operated this blacksmith shop in Bowling Green, Florida from 1897 until his death on July 13, 1953. A historical landmark, Hardy County, and was donated to Pioneer Park by the Bryant family in 1972. Pretty cool. They got these old wagons. Just think about, you know, living in those days. 
you know, we didn't live long back then because all the things that weren't cured but for diseases, but, you know, the actual, for riding those things, must have been brutal. And I got another wagon here. And more information. Talk about wheelbase. Whew. Some old farming implements, probably from the early 1900s. That wasn't in the 18s, I don't think. Got a couple picnic tables out here, an old blacksmith shop over there. Well, they're really protecting that Coke machine, so we must be beating up on that in this town to have that little playground. Cracker trail post office over there to the left. And they got this huge train just sitting here. You know, an old locomotive train. I really, I really like this Pioneer uh, RV park, even though it's not full hookup. Um, because it's an old town feel to it. The spaces aren't, you know, right on top of each other and all cement. You know, you're in the grass and they allow the corgi puppy pen to be set up, which some places don't. And I'm going to have to avoid those because um, the corgis really enjoy sitting out there. Wow, look at this thing. <laughs> wow, there's something in the day, huh? Actually, to see these things close up is really cool. This one is 1914 wood burning Baldwin locomotive, and its gift is the gift of Kerwin D. Devell of Wachula to the Pioneer Park Museum, March 1967. Wow, got a bird's nest in there of some kind. Right there. That just held the wood, wood burning. Jesus, look at that thing. 1914, they made this thing. Can you imagine that? I mean, you know, I think that's cool. Look how big that thing is. And I'm level to it. It's, you know, God, it's gotta be 30, you know, I don't know, a couple stories tall. What do you think? You know? One of the last battles fought with the Seminole Nation ended here on June 16, 1856 with the defeat of the Indians by soldiers from Fort Meade. That probably wasn't a fair fight. <laughs> you know? And there's the intersection where I'm walked to. I walked to that store yesterday. And right there is that Pioneer restaurant. Just down past that is where the Dollar General store is. You would think they'd have a light on the front of this thing. Maybe it did at one point, but it doesn't now. I guess it didn't really matter. So, anyways, I'm going to you know, take this video and I'll post this one. I appreciate all my subscribers um, and all people that are taking interest in what I'm doing. My good buddy Dave out west, I, I call him constantly and he's been very patient with my calling him and talking about my dilemmas and, and things like that. But. Um, you know, it's been a tough week and it's getting better because now it's not raining and, you know, while there's cooperating, my RV space is not 100% underwater. So there you have it. Things do get better. Um, I just put um, additional towing thing on my bus with Good Sam's towing um, for, they had it on sale for $69 and um, even though I have progressive insurance I, I think I'm 
wanting to double down on the types of towing I could get with that bus because it is unique and that bus cannot be towed it has to be put on a flatbed that could literally cost hundreds of dollars instead of you know three or four hundred dollars to bring it to the next facility and um, they can tow it but they have to take the rear drive train axle off that bus if they're going to tow it with the rear wheels on the ground and reading up on the bus is kind of confusing because here's another one of those big cypress trees looks like it's been struck by lightning at one point but um confusing on the bus and how they're able to tow that so you know one part of the book i was reading on it says you can't tow it from the front the other one says you can't tow it from the back another part of the book on the bus says you know put it on a flatbed so i just you know for 69 dollars i think it's well money well spent anyways thank you guys everybody while watching the Corgi's Adventures. This is David signing off and um, take care everybody. God bless.